The following is a rebroadcast of TV50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, oh look at this. Look at that! He's, he's got it! Ready? Go for it, man! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by the Washington Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Got Looks good. good. That's good to go. It's a home run. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Burke. Hi, everybody, and Happy New Year. Welcome to Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and uh, we welcome you to a brand new year. Of course, we continue and we begin a brand new series here on Stars and Strikes, Five New Bowlers. Five New Bowlers, uh, a new year. What else could we ask for, right? And me with a raspy voice, and uh, <laughs> but uh, Rod Stewart's made millions, so maybe my career is just yeah, beginning. Oh, does right? this mean you're going to sing today now no, no, on top no, of no. everything else? Is that what he does? <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to have uh, five new bowlers, as we mentioned. And, of course, this also begins uh, the second half, really, of our qualification process for the uh, Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We have three bowlers already in, and at the end of this four-week series, we will have our fourth. So let's meet the first two bowlers in this series and uh, get you up to date on what is happening for this four-week sequence here on Stars and Strikes. First of all, our number five seed. He's been with us a couple of times this year in doubles competition from Plastow, New Hampshire, Dave Richards. Okay, Dave comes in averaging 128, high single 191, and his roll-off score was 656. Last time Dave was here in singles, uh, in fact, was in the 1992 Tournament of Champions in which he bowled very well but came up just a little bit short in a semifinal match. Dave's back again, and he will roll our first match in this four-week series against a newcomer to Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Concord, New Hampshire, Glenn Shattuck. And uh, persistency pays off. Glenn's been trying for the show for a number of years and uh, finally made it. He averages 121, high single of 205, and his roll-off score is 659. All right, and of course we'll have our bonus ball contest a little bit later on in the program. It's worth $60 this week, and we've got a lot more surprises too for you as we begin the brand new year here on Stars and Strikes. We'll get this match going. Dave Richards and Glenn Shattuck right after this timeout. Don't go away. All right, our first look at the five names. These are the five guys that will be competing in this sequence on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We already introduced you to Dave Richards and Glenn Shattuck for today's match. The winner today will move on to face our number three seed, John Petorsky, next week. Pat Pay, good to see Pat back in the, uh, in the lineup here on Stars and Strikes. It's been more than a couple of years for him. And Bob Kelly, our number one seed, uh, almost lapping the field there by 33 pins, taking the number one spot. So there you have a look at... Uh, the bowlers to come in this series on Stars and Strikes, but uh, to get our very first match of the new year started, it's Dave Richards. And Dave doesn't waste any time. No, that's for sure. Three, six, ten, and right, plus the four pin. No wood to help him, and we're off. 1994. And almost for Dave. I mentioned he's been with us a couple of times on Stars and Strikes doubles this season. The last time Dave was here in singles competition was for the 1992 Tournament of Champions. He came in as the number two seed and lost a very tough semifinal match to Mike Morgan, who that year, if you'll recall, came in as the number four seed for the tournament and zipped off four straight wins to win the title. And uh, Dave Richards was one of his victims, 404 to 395. He leaves that one to the right. Ball spinning, but didn't break at all for him. And he'll be open the first two. Nineteen it is for Dave. And now our very first look here on the wins at Glenn Shattuck, guy that you're familiar with, Dan. Absolutely, I've known Glenn for years. Glenn's a pretty good athlete, no matter what he tries, so. And as I said at the beginning of the show, one of the bowlers that's been trying for a good number of years and finally made the show, persistency. 
Well, I think that applies to a lot of people who get on the show. And how about that to start it off? Well, regardless what happens now, he can tell them the first box he threw in front of the lights was a spare. <laughs> And a good one was, was that. At that, it was a well, 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 Easy for me to say. I know you're a little nervous with Glenn on the show. <clears throat> yeah, you know, he's you know, carrying the Concord torch. You know, <laughs> <laughs> leaves himself the five and the ten. Tries to cut the five. It's interesting. Some uh, sometimes when folks come on the program for the first time they tell us uh, tales of how many years they've been trying to make it and how long it's been before they finally got here and other times uh, I believe it was uh, Bob Johnston earlier this year uh, said he had only tried maybe four or five times and yeah. he was able to finally crack through so you never know and I think that's the that's the beauty of it is uh, it's an open competition here on the singles program of course it's open men and women and uh and to this day, people still think there is an entry fee involved. There is no entry fee, semifinals or finals. All you're doing is bowling. Regular price of bowling. Nice spare by Dave Richards. His first mark, and a good one. And we'll get another look at it. A little stubborn nine pin, but there it goes. But people have to realize it's just it's just practice. You go out, bowl five games in a semifinal roll off, and if you're in the top five, you advance to the finals for another five games. And, if nothing else, you get a chance to bowl against some of these fellows who've been on the show before. No, not quite for Dave. And the 10, 45 through four. Glenn Shattuck from Concord, New Hampshire. Glenn works at St. Paul's School. He has a daughter, Alexis. And he does a lot of his bowling at a pretty fine establishment in Concord known as Boutwell's Bowling Center. Great place. Ooh, the five and the seven this time. Last time it was five and ten for Glenn. Glenn leads by three here in the early going. One very deliberate, turns the ball over a little bit, breaks the ball from right to left. Four horsemen plus the five pin. We begin the brand new year here on Stars and Strikes with one of our old friends sponsoring this series on the program, Emmett Horgan and the gang at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan right on Main Street, Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. Dave Richards for his fifth and sixth frames. And he'll shoot at the three and the six. Piece of wood there, but I don't think it's going to come into play. In fact, it's rolling off. Oh, Dave chops it. Flush on the three pin. Drove it straight back. Ball missed the six pin. Gets it that time for a 55 half in the opening game. Both bowlers not consistently on the head pin with that first ball, which is the name of the game. You hit the head pin consistently with that first ball, then you start the score. Dave's looking at the one, the three, seven, and ten. No. Got the head pin that time, but again, too full. And it's an eight for Dave mentioned at the top of the show that we are halfway through the season in terms of qualifying bowlers for the do you believe it the sixth annual <laughs> tri-state megabucks tournament of champions and 
the three guys who are already safely in are Joe Ashline, Peter Flynn, and Mark Gregory. And uh, one of the guys from this group is going to join them. Might want to start mentioning, too, that... Oh, oh not quite for Glenn. As the six pin hangs around. I want to mention, too, Dan, that uh, beginning four weeks from today, which will be January 30th, we'll start our annual mixed doubles series here on Stars and Strikes, Sunday at noon. A little bit later on in the year, I'm going to have uh, something a little bit different, a bit of a surprise for you on our doubles program on Saturdays at noon. We'll tell you more about that as it gets a little closer. Just missing the head pin. But we can tell you that it'll be Candlepin bowling as you have never seen it on television before. Absolutely. Something completely new. No one has ever done it, at least in this area. And That's right. Their minds are going crazy at home. What could that possibly be? It's called a tease. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Richards punches right through the center for the spread eagle. Dave trailing by four in the match. Bowling with your opposite hand. <laughs> <laughs> Gets rid of the three, six, ten in the right, two, four, seven on the left. And a nice ten box. <laughs> Bowling blindfolded. <laughs> All these are good ideas, That's Dan, right. but not, but the not right. right. <laughs> <laughs> he kicks out the four pin. Leaves himself the three, six, ten, and a nice piece of wood in between the three and the six. Oh! No! I think the wood may have prevented him said from that making was that a, shot. I said that was a nice piece of wood, however, you're right, I think it cost him the ten pin. Covers it that time. But two more open frames for Dave Richards and a chance for Glenn Shattuck to add to his lead. Glenn right on the head pin, but a little bit too much of it. Yeah, it was crossing over in the one two and it was a little heavy. We talked about how Bob Kelly had a comfortable margin at the top of this series with a 33 pin edge in the number one spot over our number two seed, Pat Pay, but the scores from that point on got very, very close. John Petorsky in the number three spot had a 660. Glenn Shattuck had a 659. And then Dave Richards with a 656. And two bowlers were just one pin behind Dave. Tied for sixth with 655 were Gary Carrington and Rico Baldinelli just missing the program by one pin. So you go from third. Oh, great try, right around the seven pin. You go from third to seventh, in essence, five bowlers just five pins apart in this roll-off. A 10 for Glenn Shattuck. Take another look at that near spare. Gets the five and the 10, and look at right behind the seven pin. Well, Glenn can't add to his lead. In fact, he lost a couple of pins on count, and it's down to two now. And Dave Richards with another spare lead. Different contrasting styles right now, even though both bowlers are not on top of their game. Dave is attacking those pins a little more than Glenn, and that happens with the first time. I think you're very timid when you get on the lane, on, on the show the first time, and you kind of ease up. I think Glenn usually throws a bit harder than he is right now. Oh, nice pocket hit for Dave Richards, and how did the 10 pins stay up? It's a nine drop. Slid it too to the right. Got two pieces of wood in front of this 10 pin and two more out in front. Watch out. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Dave thought he had missed that. He just got away with it. That's 112 plus a ball in the 10th. He did not want to hit the cap of that wood out front. 
And a seven drop for a 119 for Dave Richards. That means Glenn Shattuck will have to mark twice in order to keep the lead. Glenn crossing over and he'll be set up here on the one, three, and seven with Wood. He's missing, he's usually missing to the left and that is probably slowing the ball down, making the ball grab a little bit, giving it a little more time to break on him. He's got to use a little more speed to straighten it out. He's waiting for that wood now. It appeared as though it were frozen against the one and three, but now it's in between. Now, that time he feels himself leaving it to the left and left it way out to the right to try to compensate and miss the head pin to the right. It'd be 10, 95 through nine. Coming up, we'll have details of our bonus ball contest. We have $60 up for grabs, along with some brand new bowling balls from Paramount Industries at the end of the show. So if you haven't sent in your postcards, well, you can't win then. We'll tell you how to do that right after this next break. Len Shattuck looking for a mark in the 10th, then he can't carry it. So Dave Richards will have the advantage after game one. It's a 10 for Glenn, a 105. He got that spare in the first, but nothing after that in game one. The difference is 14. Dave Richards in the lead. Game two and details on the bonus ball contest coming right up. All right, before we get back to the action, a quick reminder about our bonus ball contest. $60 available at the end of this hour. And of course, you could also win a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries in Medway, Mass. Thanks to our good friend, Bob Perella. But in order to win, you've got to send us your postcards and make sure they're regular postcards only, please, with your name, your full address, and the number from 1 to 10. The number, of course, is the number of pins you think will drop on the bonus ball at the end of the show thrown by our winning bowler. So be sure and mail those cards into Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. And again, uh, good luck. If you win, you win the jackpot and whatever... Uh, or you win whatever's accumulated in the jackpot, and you win a brand new set of bowling balls, and the bowler will win a set also. But even if you just have your card drawn, you'll receive a, uh, a nice gift from the wins and from the NHCBA. Glenn Shattuck starting game two. Start, <clears throat> starting with the four horsemen, right. One, three, six, and 10. And that, that close. Boy. One, three, and ten. Just missing the six pin. Mentioned Glenn had that mark to open the match, Dan, and he hasn't had one since. But as we watch this near spare on the four horsemen, in the ten boxes he's rolled since that spare, he's had eight ten boxes. So he's pinning well, even though he hasn't been getting the marks. One, two, eight, ten to look at this time. No. That's what he wanted to do. And it's a nine box. Dave Richards now, Plastow, New Hampshire. Where he lives with his wife, Beth. Dave works at the distribution center for MVP Sports. And he thought he had a half Worcester there. He got a couple more. Put up two fingers, but I guess he stole two more. <laughs> and there he gets two on the other side. Tough to work out of this leave for a good box. The one, four, five, and seven. And he'll have to take a seven box. Oh, we hope you send in your cards for the bonus ball contest. Give yourselves a chance to be part of the winning here on Stars and Strikes. But keep that pen and paper handy. As a little bit later on, we're going to be giving you another address um, 
for a little charity event that Dan and I are involved in uh, here at Park Place Lanes, and we think you might have a little fun with it too. So keep your uh, keep your pen and paper handy because we're going to be talking a little bit more about that later on in the hour. Ten box for Dave. Ever since you and I did that show years ago, Dan, where we bowled against each other, people have been demanding when it would happen again. And this, this isn't exactly that, because we're not going to bowl on camera, but we are going to bowl against each other for That's charity. Right. For charity. That's right. Four horsemen right for Glenn, plus the eight pin. Are we going to let them know when we're going to bowl in case they want to come watch? I think we're going to keep the location and time a secret. Oh. <laughs> That's mostly for my benefit, of course. In the dead of the night, you want to sneak <laughs> out. And yeah, I'm going to call you at 2 in the morning. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, boy. Looks like he might have gotten a break there with domino effect on the left, but left the seven and ten pins, but he's got some wood to work with. Yeah, the one good thing is that wood stayed out front a little bit. Let's see if it helps. Oh, boy. Right in front of it. Glenn's made some pretty good shots with no marks to show for them. Continues the pin well, as you mentioned. 39 now through four. bad news he hasn't had a mark since the first box. The good news for him is he's still only a dozen pins behind. Dave Richards really hasn't been able to string anything together either, save for those two marks to end game one. And Dave will shoot now at the one and the nine. A couple pieces of wood behind the head pin, plus another one now rolling in between the one and the nine. He's got to catch the head pin. After that, he's got a good shot at making this one. No. Still 12 pins, the difference. Dave Richards in the lead and in the center. This is a strange match. <laughs> it really is. Neither bowler can mount an, any kind of s sustained offense. How about that effort? Wow. That four pin just narrowly missed taking out the two for a spectacular spare. Dave does a lot of his bowling right here at Park Place Lane, so this is a home lane advantage for him, this match. But it hasn't provided to be too much of an advantage yet. Still a tight match. Not too many marks so far between the two bowlers. 11 pins, the difference. Dave Richards in the lead as we approach the halfway point here on Stars and Strikes. Here's Glenn Shattuck. Battling a 13 box drought without a mark. But in those 13 boxes, he has 10, 10 boxes. The winner of this match returns next week to face John Petorsky, and there is another 10 box, a rather unconventional one for Glenn. It just hasn't got the good rhythm yet. Halfway through the match, still fighting it. And finds the head pin this time, but full. And a nine this time. 58 through six without a mark, very good. Just about as good as it can be. Only two pins less, but 
one of these bowlers puts a couple of marks together, this thing could be over. Okay, this match is going. There's another spread eagle. How many of those have there been in this hour? Four or five? You and I have a chance against these guys, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those days you never know in this game. Quarter of an inch either way. The difference between a strike and a spread eagle. That's a seven box for Dave Richards, and now the lead is dropped below ten. Single numbers. Eight pin lead now for Dave Richards. No. Oh, here's a nice leave. Hello. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, ten. Uh, it's something like this that you, you think they're not going to make. They usually turn around and make the shot. Looks like he's going to have to take a piece of the wood and the four and seven and see if he can get things to kick to the right. That's what he's trying. Oh, he almost had it. The ball is still in the lane, and it may stay there. Cindy Sissom will have to go down and remove that. That ball is still on the plate, but it's not going anywhere. And Dave couldn't carry the seven pin. Wow. Well, I think you want to be a, just a tad further to the left. That's good work for Cindy. <laughs> Had to remove that ball without disturbing any of the wood. She's taking it with her. <laughs> and Dave misses the single. Let's take another look at that. A little more to the left, I think. That would have covered the seven pin and still came that close for the spare. So the lead is still eight for Dave Richards. Glenn Shattuck is in the pocket and carrying extra pins, but again, the extra pins may cost him. Seven and 10 again. This wood may carry the seven, let's see. Oh, it did, but not the 10. He had to catch that front piece. One furthest to the right. Nine box this time. You get the feeling there's going to be a sarcastic cheer from the crowd the next time there's a mark. <laughs> this could be it. No. Two, four, six. It sounds easy, but it's not. Let's see if he's going to get some help with this wood rolling it next to the six pin. Now, still looks like he's got to grab the two pin. Tried to get a piece of the wood at the same time. 2-4 left. Another 10 bucks for Glenn. 77 through 8 without a mark. Dave Richards, 52 through 6 without a mark. There have been only four marks in this match, all spares. As you see, Dave has three of them. Well, once again, Maybe the extra pin. <laughs> Maybe that's the idea. Missed the head pin. <laughs> well, carrying extra pins hasn't seemed to help so far in this match. Let's see what Dave can do here on the 9 and 10. The two in the back are the ones he wants to try to play. He wants to try to avoid the front one, but I don't know if he can get by it. Yes, oh, he yes. Very nicely done. Avoided the front piece. Got the back two right there. Nice shot. And a big first ball this time for Dave. Solid nine drop, leaving the five. And that boots, boosts his lead up to 18 now. Oh, gonna miss this one. You wanna miss left, because you got a lot of room to play with the left, two pieces of wood to the left. He's right on the five pin. Two in a row for Dave. And this pretty much forces Glenn Shattuck into putting something up here in the final two. And again, he's off target. This can't seems to get on the head pin with that first ball. And when he does, he's going through the middle. One, three, eight, and ten. Nine. And finally, Glenn Shattuck has a legitimate spare leave. Hasn't had many. 
two, four, five. One that I hate. <laughs> Especially when you haven't made many on the day, and there's why. Wow. Looked pretty good going down. It's another nine and a 95 for Glenn Shattuck, a two game total of 200. Dave Richards, meanwhile, has pushed the lead up to 18 plus the fill here. Oh, and he pulled that one. Oh, I get a big break though. Big break off the head pin. Eight pin drop, one in the three left, trying to make it three in a row. You're right, missed the head pin. That's the key. Three in a row. And now what would seem to be a, almost a commanding lead the way things are going. 27 in a ball. On the head pin again, and this time he this does not carry. How about that? He missed the head pin last time and took out eight. This time he hits the head pin and gets two. The one in the nine. Well, this is going to keep the deficit under 30 for Glenn Shattuck. 110 here in the middle game for Dave Richards. A two game total, 229, and there is the difference. 29 with one game to go here on Stars and Strikes. We're going to have some details about this special charity event that Dan and I are involved in. We'll fill you in on that in a minute. Well, here's that information now that we were talking about earlier. This is the eighth year that Nick Moskilly and the great staff here at Park Place Lanes have held a bowl-a-thon to benefit the Salem Boys and Girls Clubs. And uh, this year, Dan and I are getting involved, and uh, we'd like you to get involved too. Uh, Dan and I are going to bowl a three-string match against each other with uh, the proceeds going to the Salem Boys and Girls Clubs. And... Uh, what we invite you to do is send your donation. You can do that in one of two ways. You can either send a check for a flat amount made to made out to Bolathon, or you can pledge an amount per pin and support either Dan or myself. And uh, for instance, if uh, Go with Dan. if uh, <laughs> for instance if uh, you were to pledge a dime per pin and Dan were to roll a three hundred for three games then that would be a $30, uh, a $30 donation. So be sure and do this. When you send in your, your, uh, your letter, make sure it's addressed to Bolathon, and then either Dan or Doug, and then include your check if you'd like to just write a flat check or the pledge of your amount per pin. Be sure and include your name and address and send that into Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. After Dan and I hold the match, we will announce the results on the air, and of course, uh, if you're pledging an amount per pin, we'll send you back a copy of the score sheet, and you can... Uh, boy, we're going to send out copies of the score sheet. Ooh. People are going to see it. Of course, you should have went a little further. If you pledge 10 cents per pin for Doug, it means you'll have a pledge of $3.92. <laughs> <laughs> Third game starting, and Dave Richards has a nine drop. We'll be talking more about this in the weeks ahead, uh, weeks ahead, so if you missed any of that or you'd like uh, more details on it, we'll be uh, giving you a little more as time goes by, and Dave just barely carries that for the spare. Great cause, and uh, hope you all get involved with us. Yeah, this is the eighth year that uh, Park Place Lanes has hosted this bowl -thon for the Salem Boys and Girls Clubs, and uh, they've raised over $100,000 already in the previous years. And we should mention that the Bolathon itself is going to be on Saturday, January 29th. So if you'd like to be involved in person, you can stop by Park Place Lanes and, and get involved in the Bolathon yourself. Dave Richards with two marks to start the third game and he is putting the heat on right now. Leading by 29 already. And no strikes in this match so far. And Glenn's woes continue. We've seen the head pin to the left. One, three, and seven pins left. Oh, boy, oh my. Say, if it wasn't for bad luck, Glenn would have no luck at all. Right around the seven pin. That is now 20 consecutive boxes without a mark for Glenn Shattuck, but he has had some terrific shots. He hasn't had much to shoot at, but he's made some terrific attempts at spares. 
And he's got another split. This time the three, six, and seven. See if he can make something happen with this one. Can you believe that? How did the six pin stay up? <laughs> Figured his problem pin would be the seven pin. Nine box this time for Glenn. Richards on a spare. Gets seven again on the fill. Increasing the lead to 44. Yeah, another very makeable spare. All he has to do is hit that wood and that's it. It's gone. Three in a row. Second time Davis had three marks in a row, and he now has nine spares on the match. Got away with what looked like a full hit that time. Two, four, and ten pins left. Piece of wood rolling up now. You can see Dave kind of direct traffic a little bit. Still going to have to go after the two and four, though. Didn't come out far enough for him. Oh. Turned it over too much. And a nine. Sixty through four. Making it very tough for Glenn Shattuck. Oh, well, we haven't had him strike in the match. That's what Glenn's got to be thinking about. But he's got to be on a head pin, and he just can't seem to find the right line. Oh, how about that? Give Glenn credit for one thing, he's kept his concentration on the third ball. He's got an awful lot of 10 boxes in this match. But he needs marks, and there's a nine drop. Now what's the wood going to do? What else? <laughs> when things are going bad, it's gonna stay right there. Wow. <laughs> Let's go from bad to worse. That's a great shot right there, and he just didn't, couldn't hit any better. Take a timeout here on Stars and Strikes. Glenn Shattuck with the nine. Dave Richards in the lead by 51, and we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Dave Richards now in the fifth, game three. Next week's challenger, John Petorski. Ball's been with us just recently in the double show, correct? That's right. From Franklin, Mass. After John in the weeks to come, Pat Pay and Bob Kelly will be here. Some people were asking about Pat Pay not long ago. Yes. In fact, I just had a baller at. Uh, at my lanes asked me if he was still bowling. I said, I haven't seen him, but lo and behold, here he is. Just ask. <laughs> Dave playing the inside and gets everything but the 10. And a nine box. Three marks in a row, now three nines in a row for Dave. Well, I'm sure everybody here, Dan, is rooting for Glenn Shattuck uh, at, least at this point yeah. <laughs> to at least string a couple of marks together because he has deserved better. Some of the breaks he's had. Get out of there, what? <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably just punch out the two pin now. For the spare, yes! yes. <laughs> Lusty round of applause. Yes. Well deserved. 
first mark since the first box of the match. And now they're going to come in bunches. Look at this. A nine drop. Glenn could use a few together, and he gets another one. <laughs> He's saying Glenn's on a roll now, two in a row. Dave Richards mixing again. Well, that eight pin will stay up. It looks like if the wood to the right stays where it is, he'll have a shot at making all three. Just wants to play below the red line. The only thing he's got to worry about is the ball coming airborne and going through the seven and eight pins, not hitting those cluster of... Oh, oh, yes! Coming back across to get the seven was that, pin. Was that the ten pin that came across? Yes. It was. Mark number ten. All spares for Dave Richards and a spread eagle on top of it. Well, he almost made this earlier. That's at least five spread eagles we've had in this hour. Still waiting for our first strike. I don't think we've ever gone through a whole match without a strike, have we? I believe we have, actually. Have we? Yeah, it doesn't happen very often. Ooh, seven bucks. Well, if Glenn were to throw a strike here and come back with another one. That's right, that uh, <laughs> spare four seven, of course, really negates the effect of the spare. So if Glenn were to keep it going here, he could make things interesting going down to the final two boxes. Oh, off the head pin, gets a break. Oh, look at that. He saved up all his breaks for the last <laughs> few boxes in the match here. For three in a row? Yes. And I'll tell you what, a good fill on this one and another one. He's got to be thinking strike. If there was going to be a strike in a match, one would like it right now. Oh, off target again. Just four. Matching Dave's four, Phil. Not what he wanted. You'd have to convert this one. Well, Dave's going to come up with an opportunity to close Glenn out. The lead is 32 going into the final two. And a big strike. There's the first one of the match. Comes in the ninth box of the last game. The penultimate box of the match. Let's not get too excited. I think Dave thought he might have had a double there. Let's, <laughs> let's not push it, huh? <laughs> not many strikes today, so watch out next week. Or would this be the penultimate? Sorry. Oh, I knew I'd be sorry as soon as Ooh. I said. Nine bucks. They're groaning in the truck, I know. The only as well as at home. Yes. 125 for Dave Richards. The crowd isn't groaning because I didn't hear it. <laughs> 354 for Dave. So he didn't close Glenn out, but that does. He needed all strikes. Glenn could have won it if he had put some strikes together here in the final two. But instead, it will be Dave Richards to move on to face John Petorsky next week. The good news for Glenn, though, is that he was able to at least put something together in this third game, although he's going to go out with another split here in the 10th. 6, 7, and 10. Love to see him snap this over. And, and knock a few pins down by <laughs> yeah. when doing it. He snapped it over all right. <laughs> he's been snapping it over all day, but they haven't been knocking anything down. And that'll be an 8 for Glenn, a 1-14, a three-game total of 3-14. Dave Richards gets the win to start this new series here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers and have our bonus ball contest in a minute.
And welcome back to Park Place Lanes here on Stars and Strikes. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. First appearance for uh, for Glenn Shattuck. Not exactly what he wanted, but uh, at least he was able to make up from, for some of that poor luck uh, toward the end there. Well, you can talk about that first box. That's right. That was a great <laughs> shot, the first box. But, yeah, it's one of those things. You get a little timid, and, and I think you hold back a little bit, then you fall behind, and you start pressing a little bit, and then shots just don't seem to go for you. All right, let's talk to both of our bowlers. Let's first of all bring a round of applause up here for Glenn Shattuck as he comes on up. We've got a check for $100 for Glenn for uh, fifth place prize money. I know this is uh, this is not exactly how you wanted it to turn out, Glenn. Slide right in here so we can get you on camera. Uh, kind of a, well, let's face it, even when you were hitting them, they weren't falling for you. Yeah, I wasn't hitting a head pin, and when I did, I didn't get too many breaks. The only best shot I made was the first box, and that was it the whole day. <laughs> but even still, uh, boy, if you'd been able to just maybe get one more mark up there at the end, uh, you still had a chance to put some pressure on Dave there. Yeah, after that mark I got, I needed a big fill, and I left yeah. it out to the right, and I only got four, and then... That was the end of it after that. Well, I know you worked uh, long and hard to get here. Uh, hopefully it won't take you as long to get back. We appreciate your uh, persistence. Congratulations for getting here, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. All right, thanks. All right, Glenn Shattuck. And now Dave Richards on lane 31 for our bonus ball contest. We've got $60 on the line, as well as a couple of sets of brand-new bowling balls from Paramount Industries. But in order to give all that away, we have to have a match. So we hope uh, your postcard is here in the big TV. And uh, Dave will try and give us a match here through the center and it's a five see if you can get a five out of there five cards or <laughs> uh, one card will do it let's say oh it's a wrinkled card but not a match for arthur well how about pantalides i'll take a shot at that from summersworth new hampshire not a match arthur he guessed eight so uh, we'll be sending him a consolation gift from the wins and from the nhcba and that means we'll be up to seventy dollars next week and dave richards will be back next week slide right in here sir and uh, congratulations that was that was kind of a grinder that match yeah it wasn't that pretty at all and glenn i'll tell you he wasn't getting any breaks off the head pin and when he was getting a nine pin drop he was leaving a bad piece of wood or, you know we were both punching out on alley 31 you know going right through the middle but I'll take it. This uh, home home lane advantage we were talking about for you uh, during the show, but boy, it didn't seem to be much of an advantage today. They were falling tough. No, it's not quite a nice house to me today, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, yeah, I know you'll hope for better things next week. John Petorsky here next week. Yes, he's a good bowler. And we'll be looking forward to that one. Thanks, Thank Dave. You. All right, congratulations. And uh, let's spin you over to our uh, ladder now so that you can catch yourself up to date in case you joined us late today. Again, Dave Richards, our number five seed, advancing with the win, 354 to 314. He will advance to the second week of our series against John Petorsky from Franklin, Mass. And as we mentioned uh, earlier in the show, Dan, uh, he's been here in doubles. First time he's been here in singles for a while, John. And he'll be the challenger next week. Yeah, he's, he's a good veteran bowler, so he'll give Dave a, a run for his money. All right, don't forget, uh, coming up Saturday at noon, we begin uh, week two of this series here on Stars and Strikes. Of course, doubles on Saturday at noon. And then back here next Sunday at noon for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Until next weekend, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew here at the Winds, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody, and Happy New Year!